Hey y'all, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of the Lock. It's your boy Eric. And today we have another La Seraphim uh, reaction. We have their The World Is My Oyster episode four. I believe this is the last episode of the documentary. Um, it's been a great um, little short documentary so far. I love the insight that they're giving us into the different members. I think the timing of release of this is genius. Um, right around the time that they were making an, their first comeback. Um, so it really lets you relate to the members, get to know them and things of that nature. And, you know, really appreciate the comeback even more. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, again, they have the potential to be a group full of stars. Um, and each one has their own appeal. And I think that that's special and, and definitely helps, um, especially in the K-pop industry when there's so many idols, so much music, so many groups, so many debuts. You really have to garner appeal in your own special way, especially in girl groups and especially in fourth gen, where there's just so much talent to go around. Um, but I think that La Seraphim is definitely one of the unique groups in terms of I love where they're going musically and I love um, the type of vibe that they're putting out. Um, so yeah, so let's get into this episode. Before we get into it, make sure you all like, comment, subscribe, turn your post notifications on. Got lots to come your way. And uh, yeah, La Seraphim documentary, The World Is My Oyster, episode four. <laughs> Watch it one just stop. <laughs> Don't tell me Che Wan gonna stop again. Oh my god. <laughs> Did it break? Oh my god. Is she okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> they funny, is it? Oh, 
우리 다 같이 얘기했던 적이 있는데 팀에 이제 리더 관련된 음, 이야기들을 잠깐 했었잖아요. 어, 세원 씨가 생각보다 좀 빠르게 답을 주셔가지고 세원 씨가 해주시는 걸로 공식적으로 오늘 이 자리를 빌어서 어, 리세라 팀의 리더는. Oh, so that's how they chose the leader of the Seraphim. <웃음> I never knew how they chose her as the leader. So does that mean no one else wanted to be the leader or like she's the only one that responded? I like that. <laughs> she's definitely grown on me so much. She's she's definitely a double bias with Yeonjin. And I feel like this is such a like a unique time for them too because like he was saying they're starting to get booked for schedules. They're coming up on stuff. It's almost like, like again, I always be comparing it to like my experience in athletics. Like, yeah, preseason, which is I feel like is our preseason conditioning, getting in shape, probably like what they were doing in the training periods leading up to their debut. Um, you know, that's when you're going to go the hardest. You're going to be on the strict diet. You're going to this, that, and the other. But then once those games come up, like for us games, for them performances, once those kind of start to come up, you kind of have to take a step back almost. It's easy to say, like, I want you to go 100% every day. But at the same time, you want to be fresh as possible for those live performances, for games, because those are the things that matter at the end of the day. It doesn't matter if you practice perfectly and then you get out there on a live stage and you're too tired to you know give the same effort or performance and so I feel like with this time you know they're kind of I feel like they kind of just are more sharpening up things um instead of like going 110 percent as possible I could be wrong but um you know I feel like like you were saying it's more about concentration it's more about you know the quality of the work now you know because they you know, at this point, they're about to really start their performances and things, things like that. You know what I mean? They have limited time because of all the schedules about to start. I feel like it's almost harder mentally because you really have to, you don't have a lot of room for error, you know what I mean? Mm. Oh, it's a little bit of a kick. 
Such, it's crazy. Such minor details. Their attention to detail is crazy. That was, and you did a great job because that was my reaction to you. The confidence, the boldness, she portrays it. They definitely, and y'all definitely did. They were really good already, but they took the next step with the Seraphim. Damn, I've been forgetting how young Unche is. She's really still going to school. Thank you. 
get to get to get to way. <laughs> bro, Yunjin looks like a whole bro. Look at that. She's like a whole different person with different hair, bro. I love these transitions from practice to the to the final product. Yeah, Yunjin's a superstar, bro. I love Sako's hair right there. It's funny because Unche's voice, you can hear the you, the babiness in her voice, but it's such a, like a deeper tone too than like some of the other members. She has that confident vibe, even though she's the maknae and the least experienced, you know what I mean? Damn, that's a lot of people. I feel the I feel the uh, the pressure and anxiety through the screen, bro. Does Chewan wear glasses or are they like color or just like when she performs? Like, does she wear contacts when she performs or like all the time?
Damn, they got it close. Damn, did somebody just fall? Oh my god. It's got to be crazy to be sitting there hearing all those roars and screams. How does Popeye's chicken sandwich get so crunchy, juicy, and tasty? We make everything fly. Mm, get it today and make your taste buds dance. We make the Popeye's... This documentary is very well done. They edited this very well. <laughs> Their feet just dangling off the... <laughs> I don't know why that was just funny to me. Everybody crying, then the maknae is just, <laughs> just chilling. So that was the Seraphim documentary, The World's My Oyster, episode four. Um, man, I, again beautifully done beautifully executed i love how they did this documentary i love especially my favorite part was when they were kind of going back and forth between the practice stage and the um, music video shooting or like the real live stuff again i just i think that seeing stuff like I, I wish we had more instances like this like i love the the shows and the stuff like that to really get to know the members but i love this type of stuff that shows like you know the pre-debut stuff what they went through to get here i think this is the type of stuff that really like hits home 
um, and really connects, uh, you know, the audience to these members. Um, loved everything about it. Um, very special. I think they did this in, in a very special way, and I, and I just can't wait to, you know, just see what they do in the future. I have high expectations for them. Um, you know, I think all of them have done an amazing job at their own development as well as the group itself in such a short amount of time. And yeah, I just can't wait to see what more we're going to get from the Seraphim in the future. So before you all go, make sure you all like, comment, subscribe, turn your post notifications on. Got a lot of stuff coming your way. And uh, yeah, till next time.